I've had the same basic lenses for like the last five years. I haven't really thought to switch it up very much because I kind of found what I like. And since I kind of do a hybrid shooting mode where I like to do photos and video, well, I found some lenses that work great for both of those. But I've kind of reached a point where I'm starting to try and be a little bit more creative, think about my choices when it comes to lenses and things like that, not just stick to what I'm always using. And well, I think the obvious choice for a lot of people when they look for that next, especially creative step in their gear is to go with something anamorphic. Now it kind of seems like anamorphic is like a buzzword that everything is labeled as and kind of gives you those light streaks, gives you some squeeze. But when it comes to getting a real anamorphic lens, the options are not all that many. And the ones that are really good are super expensive. But Lawa is kind of trying to change that and that's where the Nanomorph comes in. You've probably heard of these because they're getting really popular, but I've been using this for a few months now. Also gotta say an apology to Lawa who did send this out to me, but this video is taking me forever. But I've really wanted to put it to use and get some testing done. I've used it on a bunch of different videos that you've already seen on the channel that I didn't really tell you was shot with this. But when it comes to using a more creative lens that gives you more style and just different options than what you might be used to, the Nanomorph series is, I think, where most people are going to be going. And after using this for a few months, I absolutely love it. Now, the biggest thing here is, or I guess I really shouldn't say biggest thing, the thing here to focus on is the size. Nanomorph is the name, and that's, of course, because they are so small. Now I only have the 35 millimeter here, but they come in a bunch of different focal lengths. So you can kind of choose which one works best for you. 35 seems to be a pretty decent, you know, go around lens for kind of everything. And that's why I'm using this one, but the size is absolutely tiny. And comparing to like, you know, traditional anamorphic lenses, this is, I mean, you just can't compete with the size. Now build quality wise, it's got a metal construction. It has de-clicked rings that are super smooth. So you have that for both aperture and for focus. And by the way, this is a T2.0 four lens. And in terms of optics, this is a 1.5 times anamorphic lens. Now this, along with any anamorphic lens, means that in the camera, it's going to look a little bit different, especially if you've, if you've never used one of these, you're gonna be maybe a little confused at why it looks the way it does when you're shooting on camera. Essentially, an anamorphic lens is squeezing everything and compressing it together to fit onto your sensor. Now the nanomorph is kind of made to really work with a Super 35 sensor. And so if you, for instance, look at this shot here, it's super wide, but really when it's being shot, it's squeezed together to look like this. So I'm getting all of this width, but it's condensed onto the size of a Super 35 sensor. So that means when you're shooting, it's going to look squeezed like this, which you know isn't great. It's especially hard for pulling focus. So you're really gonna want a camera or a monitor that can de-squeeze that for you when you're monitoring it. Now I'm shooting on the Canon C70, which does actually have anamorphic de-squeeze built in. Although one issue that I've run into is that it only has a 1.3X and a 2X de-squeeze option instead of that 1.5X. So I actually can't see the full de-squeezed on the C70 itself. But but because this is rigged, I'm using the Ninja V as my monitor, so I have that de-squeeze option there. But just something to keep in mind that, you know, if you're using like a mirrorless camera, for instance, you're more than likely not gonna be able to de-squeeze this in camera. That doesn't matter for the end result, but it's more for when you're actually shooting. I think the reason a lot of people are leaning towards anamorphic or you know wanting to experiment it, myself included, is because of the you know character that you get with the image. These lenses are not meant to be pristine and sharp, like for instance, what I'm shooting on now, these Sigma 18 to 35. Anamorphics are meant to have a little bit more character and they're not gonna be perfect, but that's kind of the point. One of the biggest features, or I guess you'd say one of the most obvious ones, is the lens flares. Anamorphics are known for having those lens flares in the background when it hits the light. And well, the Nanomorph does that as well. Comes in a few different options. You can get blue, which is I think maybe the most typical. Comes in red, so you get more of a red flare. And the one I have is the silver, which I think is a great balance because I, I like the flares, but I don't like getting distracted by the flare. And I think if it has color, just personally for me, kind of kind of does that a little bit. And at least for the type of stuff I'm shooting, I'm not like going for the flare particularly, but when they're there, it's kind of cool and looks nice. But depending on what kind of projects you are shooting, you have those options to choose from. And then of course you have the actual image quality, which again, isn't gonna be perfect. There is some pin cushion distortion here at the edges, you definitely get some warping and uh, that really is part of the character. And it is something that you can adjust and post if you want to. And the background blur is going to look more creamy, a little bit more interesting. It's not just 
straight up blur. It has some character and texture to it. And it's something I've really grown to appreciate. The one thing I was worried about when Laowa sent this over though, is the sharpness. I was worried it wasn't gonna be very sharp. And well, it is pretty sharp. It works really well. Obviously, if you're stopped down all the way to 2.4, which is its widest open, it's not gonna be quite as sharp as if you go up a little bit. So I find if I just go to T2.8, it kind of makes everything as sharp as I need it to be at least. But even wide open, it is perfectly usable. And you can see on screen all these test shots so you can decide if this is something you like like the look of, but when it comes to just having a little bit more texture in your images and not making them so sterile, I think the Nanomorph is doing a great job at that. Now, I don't think it's like overwhelming with the anamorphic or the traditional anamorphic look. If that's something you're looking for, you're gonna have to spend a little bit more money, at least it seems from my testing. But where I really think this lens shines is the price to performance ratio. So you, again, you've seen the sample images on screen and this lens is a thousand dollars. And in the grand scheme of lenses, that is pretty affordable and they are all around that thousand dollar mark the 27 35 and 50 are a thousand dollars and then the 60 and the 80 millimeter are 1099 so i mean we're not talking that expensive and even if you wanted to buy all of them if you wanted to get the whole set you're still cheaper than buying like one of the more traditional anamorphic lenses out there so it's a good price to performance ratio and because of this size it makes it so easy to shoot with i don't even need to have a huge rig if I don't want to. And in fact, I can even fly this on a drone, which is kind of insane. And for a lot of these shots, I was just walking around with my regular camera and just shooting. I didn't have to have a full rig. I didn't have to do anything fancy. It was just me and my camera with this lens and it worked out great. Now I'll leave all those lenses linked down in the description below. Again, Laowa sent this out for me to test, so I wanna thank them for doing that. And sorry, this video took so long to get out. Obviously, when it comes to filmmaking and creating films, the gear is not what really matters. It can affect your film and it can help you or make it a little harder to create what you want, but at the end of the day, the gear doesn't matter. But what I've always said and what I found, especially with something like the Nanomorph, is that it kind of kickstarts something in my brain at least to be a little bit more creative or think of things in a different way. And that's what I've really enjoyed with having the Nanomorph and being able to experiment with it. It's a lens that I think a lot of people are going to start using and that I think is actually worth it. And if you're looking to dip your toes into that anamorphic world, Nanomorph, I think is the way to go.